life. Beck's self-titled topical talk show on the Fox News Channel debuted on January 19, 2009 to over 2.4 million viewers. This incredible launch built off the success of Beck's nightly TV show on CNN Headline News, which he hosted from 2006 to 2008. Glenn is married with four kids, resides in Connecticut. His wife, Tanya, is here with us today. Glenn Beck has risen to prominence in American culture at a pivotal, a pivotal moment in our history. Amid the noise of pundits and politicians, Glenn Beck's clarion call is reminding America of its own history and warning its citizens how easily prosperity, freedom and prosperity can fall prey to tyranny and socialism. In recognition of Glenn Beck's tireless efforts to preserve the American ideal with the power vested by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, the Doctor of Humanities degree is hereby conferred with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Please welcome to Liberty University to deliver your 2010 commencement address, Glenn Beck. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I didn't know that honor was uh, didn't know that honor was coming, and it kind of wrecks my opening <laughs> because I was going to tell you that it is such an honor to be here as a as a man who is never uh, was never uh, able to go to college. I had the first in my family that went. I went for one semester, but I couldn't, I couldn't afford any more than that. I am humbled and honored. Chancellor, thank you. you too. <laughs> if I were only single and you were a woman, <laughs> we'd be set. <laughs> I want to thank the Chancellor and the University also for inviting me to speak. I understand the courage that it took to invite me to speak for a myriad of reasons, my faith just being one of them. And I want you to know that I understand that the, inv the invitation to speak today is not meant as an endorsement of my faith, but I also want you to understand that my agreeing to speak here today is an endorsement of your faith. This is a time where we all need to come together. We may have differences but we need to find those things that unite us. We need to find the courage within inside of ourselves. As I was thinking what I could possibly say to you, what encouragement I could possibly give to you, I, I look at the things that are facing you today, the worst economy in generations, the euro on the road to collapse, are spending ourselves into oblivion. No one in Washington seems to care about debt anymore. Unemployment is at 10 percent. We live at a time where you must have great courage. You must have great faith. 
We live in a time where it seems truth is on the run. Last week, I heard the president speak at a ceremony much like this. He said that there is now too much information available, that it is sometimes too confusing. This is a course that has been charted before in the past, and it always ends with those who are willing to burn books. There is no such thing as too much information. There is no such thing as a question that should not be asked. There is no such thing as a book that shouldn't be read. In the one semester, in the one semester, and the one class that I took at Yale University, I sat feeling so out of place. I took it when I was 30. I was just looking for answers. I had been educating myself and reading as much as I could myself. And I raised my hand and I asked the professor a question. And he said, who are you reading, Mr. Beck? And I told him. He said, okay, don't read that guy. Here, here's what you need to read. You need to read this guy. I said, all right, and I wrote it down. The next week, I raised my hand again. I said, excuse me, professor, I, I just have another question. I asked him the question, and he looked at me, he paused, and he said, are you still reading the book that I told you not to read? I stayed silent. He said, did I not tell you to read this man instead? I said, yes, you did, sir, and I read that. Now back to my original question. <laughs> I had read what he wanted me to read, but no one should stop you from searching for information. It's not enough to know that you think that this man of authority thinks that the other one is wrong. You must understand and decide yourself. It is your God-given right and God-given responsibility. Use your own brain. Anyone who doesn't understand, anyone who says that you are not capable of sifting through all the information and finding truth is someone that does not understand God and the power of the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth to you. The Spirit is an amazing tool. Rely on God. Do your own work.